the UK time there. He's in Ireland, to be exact. And he's going to be fighting for a title over at Arena 12 on December 12th. Joining us now is the Russian Hammer, but us hardcores know him as the GOAT. What's up, Artem? How are you? All good, guys. Thanks very much for having me on the show. It's really good to see you. We haven't done this in a long time, but it's great to catch up, and it's good to finally be here again. Oh, thank you, sir. And, you know, I was telling Goes about we connected because I was just curious. A lot of people don't know this, but you lived a couple years in Argentina, and I was just wondering if you had any memories of Maradona. And I was explaining to the audience, you never really played football or followed football much, but you did tell me that, wow, I mean, everyone knows who Maradona was in Argentina. So you, did you feel it a little bit when you, when you heard of his passing last week? Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Maradona, you know, he is, he is the best ever. Of course, everybody knows him. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to be good at football. but <laughs> And I used to play as a kid, but I was just terrible. You know, it just uh, it, it didn't work out for me, you know. But, of course, I know who Maradona is. You know, everybody knows the hand of God and uh, uh, all the incredible things that he has done, you know. Uh, and, of course, as a character as well, he was some character, you know. He, he, he is the kind of guy I would probably would love to, uh, you know, have a joint with, you know, he, I'd say he has some uh, great stories to tell. Yeah. He put it perfectly. Yeah. That guy definitely loved to, to uh, work hard and perform on the pitch, but when it was all over, man, he'd like to party it up. That's for sure. Oh yes. Yeah. Hey, so listen, it's been two years since you fought MMA. I, I, when you told me you had the fight coming up, I looked it up quickly and I saw it was right around the corner. How are you feeling? Are you anxious to, you know, it's not like bare knuckle where it was just hands. I mean, now you get to throw elbows and knees and kicks and it, it's back to, you know, the sport that you love. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm excited. Um, I, I, you know, I was training uh, MMA for the last uh, year. Uh, it just happens to be that, you know, I like to compete across all sports. But if you want to be ready for any other sport, it's best to be taking the MMA approach in terms of training. If you are ready for a five-round MMA fight, you're going to be ready for a boxing fight. You're going to be ready for a bare knuckle fight. You're going to be ready for a K1 fight. Or at least the transition is going to be a lot easier. Whereas if you, let's say, just train boxing and then an MMA fight comes up, you know, you're going to need a lot more time to prepare for that. So because this year was supposed to be very busy for me, I did not expect Corona, of course. I was I started training MMA from the beginning of the year and was just kind of, uh, MMA was the main uh, focus for me. And uh, it just so happens to be that I am, in, in fact, fighting MMA now at the end of the year. I didn't think I would be out this year. It didn't look like uh, it was going to be a possibility with everything that's going on. But I'm happy to be fighting again and happy to make sure that uh, my family has a nice and green Christmas this year. Love it. And it's five rounds. So you're, you're in a title fight at Arena, uh, at Arena Fight 2. Uh, that's, that's great. Is that something that you were able to negotiate? Hey, I'll step in for this vacant title, but, but I'm not fighting any, you know, I'm not going to do any contender bites. I, I, I want to go straight for the gold. Uh, to be honest, no, I did not request the title. This was something that they just suggested, you know, and of course, you know, I just say yes to me. The only thing that mattered in the whole thing was the the, the paycheck. You know, I said, look, guys, once the paycheck, once I'm happy with the paycheck, I don't care who you want me to fight. I don't care what weight you want me to fight, what sport you want me to fight. I don't give a fuck. Sign that paycheck and I'm going to be there. Artem, we've seen you compete in just about anything that's available. And one thing that I heard you say that really got me interested was you said in 2021, you want to actually look towards boxing. And I wanted to ask you, um, how soon into 2021 is that something you want to do? And when you do that, do you just have to immerse yourself in only boxing or do you train a little MMA and some of the other stuff? Because like, like I said, we've seen you fight just about anywhere. Yeah, uh, the reason I say boxing is, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm only going to be fighting for two more years. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would like to secure a good future for my family. Now, I've been getting six figures for quite some time now, and life is good on six figures. But if you want to secure a good future for the family, you have to be hitting those seven-figure paydays. And I feel the easiest way to do it, if, if not almost the only way to do it, is through boxing. So, uh, you know, I had some interesting proposals at the start of 2020, 
but Corona fucked everything up for me. So I'm hoping to pick it right up where I left it off, you know. And uh, yes, I will be, I will be training MMA because it will be, it will make sure that I'm ready for any other combat sport. But uh, yeah, I will definitely be looking towards boxing uh, for sure. Did you watch uh, this past weekend with Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr.? If so, what were your thoughts? And then also, Jake Paul was very interested in fighting MMA guys. What did that do for you? Did that get your mouth watering? Because that seems like a fight that we would all love. That's right down your alley, Artem. Yeah, I mean, in terms of that fight, you know, I have absolutely nothing to gain from beating that guy other than financial gains. So if they give me the paycheck that I'm happy with, I don't care. I, I can whoop Jake Paul or his brother or whoever else in the family wants to get it. They can get it. Uh, as for Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, you know, I was so happy to see those guys nice and healthy. And, uh, you know, uh, I was excited to watch the fight. I enjoyed the fight. To me, when, when you have two guys like that, they have done everything in the sport. And to me, if they want to do it for whatever reason, let them. You know, these guys don't need to prove anything. They have proven whatever needs to be proven already. So if they have that itch, if they have that fire back on, or if they want money or whatever the reason might be, you know, I have no issue at all, you know, with them doing it. And I enjoyed it. It was uh, very enjoyable for me. If they do it again, I will certainly tune in one more time. Uh, you know, all the power to them. You know, they are absolute legends, and I love all of their fights, including this one. Yeah, I want to see the Jake Paul one for sure, man. Hopefully you, they, they pay you for that one, and you can get out and and whoop that YouTuber's ass. Um, hey, I'm all for it. You know what I mean? Easy paydays. You know, I, I haven't had many easy paydays in my life, so uh, maybe I'm due one. So yeah. let's do it. Hey, it, like you said, it's been a while since we caught up. I wanted to ask you, are you completely done in the bare knuckle world? And did you enjoy your time when you fought at bare knuckle? Oh, I absolutely loved it. It's a, it's a great sport. It's a great experience. It's unlike anything I have ever experienced. I really love the fact that the round's only two minutes and there's only five of them. Uh, that ensures excitement. You know, as soon as you start adding fighting time, you know, excitement takes a hit straight away. People are just too careful. They're afraid of getting tired, rightfully so, of course. Uh, also, on top of that, in terms of uh, brain damage, you know, uh, fighting time is directly proportion, uh, directly uh, correlated to, uh, you know, uh, brain injuries. So the shorter you fight, the less likely uh, you will get a brain injury, you know. So I really love that concept. You know, uh, it's not very long. Get in, put on a show and get a fuck out. And it's, it pays so well, so damn right I loved it. And, and I'm hoping to make a comeback uh, at some point in 2021. Um, definitely. You know, I want to be fighting across all the sports. And Bare Knuckle is probably, um, you know, very uh, at the very top of that list. I put that first night fight up there with Forrest and, and Bonner, man. It was epic. I loved it. That was quite the show. Um, I got to imagine when, when you run into fans, they bring that up a lot. Oh, yeah, definitely. That fight, I, I felt like I was just in the blender, you know. You, I was just going out, and it was somebody turning on the blender, and there was shots flying from everywhere. Blood was fucking all over the place. Then the round would be over. I would sit down. My hands were in agony. I was like, what the fuck has just happened? They said, right, it's time to go back out right there again. They turned the blender back on, and it was just all over again. Uh, it was absolutely crazy experience, but uh, yeah, it was very enjoyable and uh, very good for my wallet as well. So I will keep doing that. <laughs> nice, and I'm not sure if we ever even told you congratulations on defeating Polly Malianaji, a former two-time boxing champion. Uh, you guys built up a great fight, and you got your hand raised, so you should be very proud of that one too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was a big moment for me. That was a must-win. Um, and uh, I got it done, you know, it, it was incredible. I mean, I, I knew that uh, coming into the fight, not many people believed I could do it, but I knew I could do it because Ireland is a hot spot for very, very talented boxers. So in my preparation for that fight, I was sparring, you know, Olympic medalists, I was sparring world champ champions and uh, you name it, you know. So, uh, you know, I was well prepared, um, e even though... I, I got to spar all those guys only in the last week of my preparation because after the Jason Knight first fight, my hands were so fucked up that I couldn't even hit pads for the whole camp. And uh -huh. only in the last 
in the last 10 days, I actually managed to get some sparring in. And I literally, like, in, within one week, I got, like, four spars in. And uh, that was kind of my only sparring for that um, for that fight. But, you know, I, I felt good in sparring. I moved well. I did really good against some really tough guys. And, and I was very confident. You know, I, I knew that... Uh, uh, Heart-wise, you know, I would be able to stay in it, and I knew skill-wise, uh, I was also going to be able to destroy that guy, and uh, it sure worked out that way. Yeah, and let's finish with this. Um, of course, your mate Conor McGregor has a fight lined up too. Have you guys been sharing any rounds at all um, as he prepares for Poirier, and you've been preparing for your title fight at Arena Fight Two? Yeah, to be honest, we actually didn't get to train uh, um, in this camp, uh, mainly because of this whole COVID shit, you know, it just made uh, moving around very hard, you know, and with all this, uh, like anytime you left Ireland, you had to quarantine for two weeks uh, whenever you came back. So all that made it very, very difficult, you know, uh, and we didn't really get to train uh, together much, but who knows, perhaps after this fight, you know, uh, I will fly out the corner and... Uh, uh, you know, help him uh, with some of his uh, sparring and some of his preparation for his own fight. I will definitely be uh, going out there to watch the fight. I'm not even sure where the fight is going to be yet, but uh, I will be there to support 100%. Artem, I know you're a best mate of his, but you've always been a straight shooter. Can you just give us an, uh, uh, an objective, as much objective as you can, breakdown of how you think this fight's going to go a lot of fans are looking forward to this they fought once before at 145 now they're fighting at 155 you've done the same thing um how do you think this fight goes uh if you just break it down to the to the newer fans that are now starting you know, I, I see this fight going exactly the same way the reason being is you know everybody's trying to make it out like Poirier wasn't good before he fought Connor or something like that like he's changed so much no, remember what, what Poirier was. He was number five featherweight in the world. He was destroying guys. You remember his fight with Koch, who was number top 10, you know, featherweight at the time. He stopped him. Brandao, you know, he, this guy was an absolute killer. It's just people don't want to give Conor credit for destroying these guys. Poirier was an absolute killer, killer back then, but just stylistically, his style just matches up so well against Conor that Conor, you know, will, will stop him again in the first round, and it will be no different from, from their first uh, meeting, you know what I mean? So Conor, uh, Poirier was good before they fought the first time, just Conor was so good that he destroyed Poirier like that, and then after that, Poirier went back to doing what he was doing before he fought Conor, dominating and being a very good fighter. So, uh, I don't see anything changing this time around. It's going to be exactly the same fight, and Conor is going to stop him in the first. All right, there you have it. Thank you for that breakdown. But first things first, December 12th, Arena Fight 2, Artem Lobov is fighting for the vacant title there, the vacant lightweight title. So we hope you have a safe uh, weight cut, you know, 155 pounds there. And, of course, it's always great to have you on the show, Senor. Uh, born in Russia, forged in Ireland with a two-year pit stop in Argentina. Hablo un poco de español. Un saludo a los latinos que no creen que tú puedes hablar español. Oh, and he had to go. <laughs> I guess he had to go. Okay. Uh, no worries there. I was asking him to do a shout out to the Latino fans because a lot of people don't believe he speaks Spanish. Just like a lot of people have never believed that Valentina could speak Spanish either. Yeah. Maybe he's had to back up in a while. Huh? Oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, he's going to pop in. Nice. Okay. No, yep. no, no sé qué ha pasado, pero me cortó. No sé por qué, pero a todos los latinos, muchísimas gracias por su apoyo. Uh, como siempre, uh, me gusta mucho y uh, espero que pueda noquear a este tipo y vamos a celebrar mucho. Ya ven, él puede hablar español muy bien. Gracias, Artem, for coming back and doing that. Shout out to the Latino fans. It's always great to have you on the show. Thank you so much, guys. Really All appreciate right. that.